cool. Slippery little thing, isn't it? Pretty fun. Let's boogie. Hello and welcome back to High Ground MTG. I'm your co-host Kai Guy, and before we get started, I just want to let you all know that timestamps for all of the matches will be in the description box down below, along with a deck list. And while you're down there, if you want to click that like button, I'd appreciate it a lot. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the deck that we are going to be piloting tonight. That's right, Slippy Buggy Boys, the Bogles, Boggles, the Bugles. Beep, beep, beep. Um, we're gonna be playing. Be bugles <laughs> we're gonna be playing bogles tonight um yeah pretty stock list uh if you don't know what bogles are uh the archetype is you're playing a one drop hex proof creature and that you just attach a bunch of auras on and you just grow it super big and it's pretty non-interactive and hopefully you can get your opponent dead so let's go over the list how i've configured it for the metagame uh Basic land package, we're running 20 lands, uh, which is not very much. So let's go over lands. We've got a Dryad Arbor. Sometimes the Arbor just gets there. Uh, we're running one Basic Forest, two Basic Plains, uh, two Basic Plains in case we get Blood Moon and we want to be able to cast Daybreak Coronet. That's the reason. It's super, super important. This is the most important aura in the deck. Four Horizon Canopies, four Rage of Verge Thickets, two Temple, Gar Temple Gardens by the amazing Elena Danner. Um, if you haven't looked this looked this image up online without all of the text over it, it's absolutely stunning. Uh, Windswept Heath, Wooded Foothills. Have you seen this like online promo yet? It's uh, Jonas Del Rio. Uh, Ro? Um, pretty cool. I, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, and then, so that's the land package. Let's jump into what the auras are. We're running four ethereal armor, uh, plus one, plus one. And for each enchantment you control, um, and it has first strike. So this gets out of control super fast. And that's really great. Running four griffs boon, giving our creatures flying. We're trying to want to make our threats as evasive as possible. That's going to help. Uh, four hyena umbra. Again, plus one, plus one, and it has first strike. So we've got eight cards that will get a first strike. I'm running two spirit links. This is, from what I've learned, separate from lifelink. So if the creature has lifelink, you can have, technically, it's like double strike, but for lifelink. So the creature will gain that much life. And then if it has a lifelink attachment or attached to it, it'll also gain that much life. Does that make sense? I don't think it makes sense. Hopefully, we'll be able to see it in play, and it'll make sense. Uh, our four Glade cover scouts from M14. The forest is my cover, and I hold it close. In such a tight embrace, there's no room for wickedness. What the? What kind of flavor text is... Anyways. Uh, Rancor. Hatred outlives the hateful. Now there's some flavor text. Uh, running four of... So we're kind of all in on the, on the Rancor plan here. Four Spider Umbra. Plus one, plus one in his reach. Um, the namesake of the deck, Slippy Rebogle. I want to, I always say Slippy Bogey Boy, <laughs> just because it's so much fun. Art by Esper, uh, Ejing. Ogle the Bogle or Goggle the Boggle, doesn't matter. You weren't going to catch it anyway. Now that's some good flavor text. Uh, four, cure, four core Spirit Dancer. Uh, this can grow out of control super, super fast, super wildly. Um, Spirit Mantle, running two of these, plus one, plus one, and protection from creatures. Unblockable is pretty nice. Daybreak Coronet, the mother load of uh, pretty much the king of all enchantment auras. Uh, plus three, plus three, first strike, vigilance, and lifelink. The only catch is we need another aura attached, which isn't too difficult. Uh, in the sideboard, running two Path to Exiles, we want removal for Uro decks. That's why I'm playing two Rest in Peace and two Graft Digger's Cage, in case I'm on the draw, and I need to get this down faster. Uh, against all of... I'm also running Spirit Link because of all of the Prowess decks jumping around. Uh, so three Leyline of Sanctities um, to help give us Hexproof. 
two force of vigor in case we run up against any kind of silly nonsensical chalice of the void decks we don't want to deal with that nonsense and two gaddick teague for control um yeah that that old kithkin advisor uh just knows what to do anyways that is the deck of slippery bogles so let's get into our first match shall we Match one, here we go. Our opponent says hi and good luck. We will do the same. Hi. G L H F. Good luck. Have fun. Uh or good luck, high five. Shout out to Yeah, good luck, high five, the podcast. Uh Miss Maria Pants. She loves the Bogles archetype, actually. So this is a pretty keepable hand as long as they don't mana tie their slippery bogle. Which, okay, well we don't have to worry about that. So looks like we're on the up and up. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So I think we're just gonna fetch out a temple garden here, and then we'll drop our slippy bogey boy and get going. Get going. We have a ton of enchantments. We'll be able to drop. We'll be able to drop Ethereal Armor, and then we'll be able to drop Daybreak Coronet, I think is the plan. Depending on what they play here. Um, but I think having First Strike is going to be really key, especially if they're going to... Especially if they have the possibility of Violing in a creature. We could also be looking at a Death and Taxes list. I don't know. Could be a Green White li Taxes list. But they're only at one, so... We can drop... We can drop double... Ooh, that's really good. Okay. So let's drop... Let's drop this. That'll give ourselves a little bit of protection. And then we'll drop Ethereal here. So if they have Path to Exile, they're, they got nothing. So we're going to get in for four. First Strike, Hexproof. All of those wonderful things. All right. Douglas Francis, DF, Eldrami's Call, Eldrami's Call, is this, what is this, what are they catching, Elvish Reclaimer, mm. you're gonna vial that in, that seems wise, seems pretty good, alright, Elvish Reclaimer in, this card online has like spiked to insane amounts, I still don't know, I'm still unaware of what this, what this archetype is, it might be a Titan deck, but I'm not sure. <gasps> I think it is a Titan deck. Radiant Fountain. So we could be looking at a Field of the Dead deck. Um, but I'm thinking that we don't care here. Because we're just going to... It's going to be really good for us here. Got the old Scouty Scout. Fun fact. I used to be a Boy Scout. Very fun fact. I made it to Eagle Scout, actually. It was very fun. They have any kind of idea about us. Okay, so this is the lifelink thing. So we should gain 9. We should be gaining 18 life here. If my science is correct. Deals damage. Okay, so I think we gain 19 life. Ah, okay. That's some synergy. Some synergy. My light just like fell down. Temple Garden for our opponent. But yeah, we should be gaining 18. So we, that that trigger happens. Yeah, then we're up to 32. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. Not gonna lie. It's pretty 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 good. They were able to stem off stem off the bleeding but once we have griff spoon unless they have a flying creature i don't think they're gonna make it because we'll be dealing oh it doesn't have double strike i don't know why i thought it had double strike first strike okay well we'll deal nine damage here next turn and we'll gain 18 assuming the math is correct math that's what's foot in a that and you know whatever you're eating for dinner Vial activation from Douglas Francis. You know, I know it, Doug. 
he is okay so we are up against some sort of titan um valakit like i'm pretty sure feel of the dead deck all right so there's second clue I think having this double lifelink is actually really helpful if we're looking down the barrel of Valakit. We're also going to play Griffspoon, which is going to up Ethereal Armor's uh, devotion count to auras. So, all right. Mountain. They're going to target us, I imagine, because they can't really target the Bogle. But we are okay with that. And depending on how things get, we can start to crack these horizons to try and dig ourselves out for more. Yeah. So check this out. We'll do this. So this has flying all of a sudden. All right, and opponent scoops it up. So yeah, so we could have what we could have done is yeah we could have cracked this land and then played Razor Verge Thicket. So we would have drawn this, and we could have played Razor Verge like it, and then put Spider Armor on it. So it's pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, all right. So against this deck, I kind of don't really... Hmm. Feel of the Dead? Feel of the Dead. I don't really know. Our pun says GG. Give him that old GG back. Um. Again. It's always so much nicer to look at the cards like this, don't you think, when you're sideboarding? Everybody always leaves it in that long thing. Um, oh, I forgot that I put Stony Silence on the sideboard. Good against Tron. Uh, okay. Maybe we put Ring and Ley Line so we're not getting hit by Valakit to kind of invalidate that game plan. What do we want to take out? Mm, maybe some Core Spirit Dancers. We'll take out two of those and... Yeah... Yeah, let's take out a Rancor. Try it like that. It's kind of a dealer's keep. One second while I adjust my light. That looks fine. We'll keep it like that. What do we draw? What do we draw? Hmm, this is the troubles with Bogles. Is sometimes you don't get what you want. Ooh. It's also very good, but we don't have a Bogo, but we could start with a lane line and get it turned to. We are on the draw, so this is a possibility. <sighs> Let's keep this. Might not be the right choice, but we can if we can get this down and get it protected. What do we want to put to the bottom? Bottom 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 bottom. Let's put planes down. Done. Then we'll drop lay line here. This will give us protection against, like I said, uh, that one thing. The mountain. The legendary mountain that shouldn't be a mountain. A Valakit. So. Alright, so they're dropping Vile. We could have brought in... Uh, we could have brought... Oh, you know what? We should have brought in Force of Vigor. Because that, that Iliad thing is also... Um, ah, that was such a... That was not a good plan. Because that Dryad of Ili Iliad is also an enchantment creature, so... I could. I didn't want to bring it in because I was thinking, ah, vile. Like, it's not so hot. But I don't know if they have enchantment hate. They might. All right, Thalia. That's gonna make things a little bit trickier for us. This is like taxes on like crack. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, we should crack that. That's fine. Okay, we're gonna go fetch for our temple garden. And then, yes. And then, I don't know. Do you think that they take out? I mean, I think they take out bolts. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. And then, you know, we just start playing. We just start playing uh, the things. We There was also, you know, we could have brought in Pat the Exile too, but I think I was just leaning super heavy on the Bogles just trying to get there, so. All right, Thalia getting in there. A legendary creature with horse strike. Also, one half of our channel's mascots. All right. 
Griff's Boon. So I think I want to play... I want to play this to kind of get Spirit Dancer protection. Pseudo protection. Yes. She's going to get pretty big. 3-5. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um... Since we can't technically play anything else, I think we go swing in. I don't think they have anything that they can block that's five power at two mana. So they'll block and they'll sack and they'll get a land here. That's fine. But we force it out of their hand. And they're down to five, four cards in their hand, so. All right, snow-covered plains for Douglas Francis. Douglas Francis. All right, so they activate their vial. I'm just letting our opponent know that if they want to come check out this game later on on YouTube, they can do so. If you ever come up against me or my co-host Spiny Mouse, let us know. And you watch the channel, let us know. All right, they're swinging in with Halia. That's fine. If we draw one more land, we're looking pretty okay. Okay, so Eladrami's call. They could, they could find Rex Sage. Maybe they're playing Rex Sage. Corsair of Crufix. That's going to come in. It's got a big butt. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Knight of Autumn. The Swiss Army Knife of Modern. All right. What do we do here? I think I... I want to give it flying. I want to have it. I want to give it some evasiveness so I can see if I can try to be a little more aggressive. Okay. Six seven. So we're gonna. Uh, we need a. We need a life link. Or a Thalia is really doing work and slowing us down. Slowing us down. We could be. It could be have so much attached by now. Thirteen. Hmm. We'll drop this Glade Cover Scout. So, like I said, we have some invasion, and if our opponent, old DF, Douglas Francis, decides to figure out a way to destroy Core Spirit Dancer, we have the protection with the Umbra, so. Vesuva. Oh, that's interesting that they didn't, I guess, like, upkeep, draw... I guess I can. I guess I can just vial in the Enchantment Hate card. Vesuva. Prime time at the top of their library. Ooh, that was a good pick. I didn't realize that it could pick any land. That's really good. Good tech. Good tech. All right, so Swiss Army Knife here. We're looking at Night of Autumn. Double green and a white. I don't like this card. I don't know why. I just... I think it's because it's like... It always gets cheated out. Like, no one ever just casts it on turn six, you know? <laughs> it's always... It's always something. Yeah, this would have been really good. This is unfortunate, but... What are you going to do? Let's see if they play an additional land. Huh. It's interesting. All right, so they're swinging for two. That's fine. If we draw a Daybreak Coronet, that would be amazing. Like I said, we have Ley Line Protection. Oh, yeah! I was like, we also have protection against, uh... I was gonna say Vesuva. Um... So they don't... Oh, no! They have three mana up! I walked right into it! Oh, no! 
I should have been paying attention to the vial. I got so excited that we ripped Daybreak Coronet. Always pay attention to what is going on in the board state. All right, they're going to... It's so annoying. They're probably going to Swiss Army in... Oh, we win the match. Okay. All right, so we are up one game. Hmm. I wonder what they would have... I thought they were going to have in uh, the Night of Autumn, and then I guess they could have gotten rid of that, but six? I don't know. I guess maybe they had a shot, but... Game two. Let's see. Let's up dinner. Oh, we're up one. All right. Um, that's a lot of bogles. Uh, we'll keep this. I think having this many bogles means that we'll draw into a ton of auras. Well. Fingers crossed that we'll draw into a ton of auras. <laughs> we'll see. Should send the old Gulak GLHF out. The old Bogles. Temple Garden. We're up against another, another foresty deck. Aether Vial. Elvish Reclaimer. Are we literally up against the same archetype? Well, that means good news for us, I guess. Elvish Reclaimer. All right, they don't know what's coming. This time we won't make the same mistake as last time. Yeah, see, my uh, my plan paid off. All right, slippery bogle, get your butt in there. I choose you, bogle. <laughs> all right. Oh man, I hope you all picked this card up when you could on digital. Like I said, I'm pretty sure it's spiked. I don't know. All right. Psychotecta. Ooh, Cavern of Souls. Holographic Cavern of Souls. A foil. A Modern Masters 3. Man, I remember when this card was, like, just so rare because it just had the Avison printing, and now it's, like, I feel like it's been printed just a few times. The Modern Masters 3, Ultimate Masters... So that it's a giant. We're not playing anything. This is interesting. Very interesting. All right, well. Well, I'm going to try and... See if they have any kind of... Well, I was like, see if they have any kind of, like, counter spell. I'm like, mana type? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. All right. Oh, no! It's the Rancor! That's, uh... My best C3PO impression. Oh no, the Rancor. Do you think they have a giant growth or a titanic growth? Let's call it. Bada bing, bada boom. Taking four. All right. They're tapping. They're activating this ability. Sacrifice a land. Search your library for a land card. Put it in the battlefield. Tap, then shuffle your library. Are they activating this? Where are they? What land are they sacrificing? Interesting. So they get rid of their Cavern of Souls. I wonder if that was just like their mana was just a little janky and so they kind of had to do it, do it on purpose. Interesting. All right. The synergy with this in this card, when you put it in your graveyard from the battlefield, put a planes, is really good. Now I remember. That's really good. Because, yeah, if you sack this, you're accelerating your library. You're accelerating your mana pretty, pretty good. Man, all of that for one mana. Ooh, Amulet of Vigor. All right, so we're definitely bringing in Force of Vigor. Bringing in our own Vigor card. Not Vigor, the card, but, you know, Force of Vigor. Another enchantment here would be great. All right, that's what I'm talking about. We're going all in on this. If we draw a daybreak, we are looking pretty good. Pretty, pretty. I keep saying that. Oh, it's one of those nights. All right, so they're going to do the flagstones thing. They're going to go to planes, I think. Imagine they're stacking that. Okay. 
Oh, they could. Ooh, they could bring in like an amulet card, huh? Or a uh, double. Oh, they're bringing in a temple garden. This is a very interesting. Interesting. So they have open mana. This is a very interesting card. This seems to be popping up. Keep your eyes out on the on this card when you uh, when you decide to play modern, ladies and gentlemen. Here I am with Bogles. Not care in the world. <sighs> Alright, Selesnia Sanctuary. They're doing that thing that things do. <sighs> I remember when Summer Bloom was legal. Ugh. Bleh. Glad that's not in the metagame anymore. So gross. But if we don't draw something better, we're going to be looking at... <laughs> We're looking at a tough, tough game here. So what are they getting with Eladramri's Call? Eladramri's Call. Eladramri's. You think it's prime time? You think they get prime time? Because they've got one, two, three, four, five. They're pretty close to being able to cast it. This is when I cast Force of Thinkation. This pitching Slippery Bogle. No one ever sees that coming. <laughs> oh my gosh, could you imagine? There's a world where you're playing blue instead of... You're playing blue-green, so... Okay, so they cat Asusa. Asusa, lost but seeking. Ooh, they get a nice one. I do not miss Jukai Forest. It is not my home. My home is Kamigawa. Its people are my family... Wherever I set my pack and rest my head, I am home. Wow, she said home three times in that flavor text. All right. We get it. You played the thing, and you did the thing. That was all at the end of my turn. They're at eight life, though. We just need, like, we need an evasive aura, and we are okay. All right, so they're playing Asusa. I think we bring in Paths for the next game. I think there's too many valuable creatures. But Path isn't really what you want against like a deck like this, you know what I mean? All right. I think we just yield our turn. Some good, good iced coffee. What's going on? All right. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Play two lands so they can play another another one of those like uh, bounce lands, two more bounce lands. They could, in theory, get like six mana, I think. So they could drop. Uh, yeah. Flying would be amazing. If we got a Griff's Boon. Wouldn't it be enough? We'd be at seven. <sighs> plus one, plus one, seven. We need... We need a Daybreak Coronet, I think, to win the game. All right. They're, they're thinking their things through. They're thinking their things through. Have you ever played Bogles? Let me know in the comments down below. If you have, how do you stack your, <laughs> how do you stack your, all of your enchantment auras? I know people that like, you go like up and then, yeah, it's just really interesting because it's like, how do you read these? I used to do it like on the bottom, but then I just realized it's so much easier to keep track of everything if you just stack them on top instead of underneath. But, all right, so they have six mana. They've got Titan mana. All right, casting Eladrami's Call. Probably one of the best creature tutors in modern right now. I think it took a while for it to see some play, but I think it's definitely seeing play now. Oh my goodness. Is this still game one? Oh, they're at 18. Yeah, it's still game one. Couldn't remember for a split second. All right, 
dropping in something. Okay, so they do get prime time. If they have another one of those lands, they'll be able to drop prime time in, drop in another land, and drop in another land. This is why I auto yielded my turn. <laughs> it just dawned on me that our opponent's name is Psycho Titan. So. <laughs> Two weeks later. <sighs> Interesting. Okay, so they're activating the ability. What do they get? I guess they get... That's very interesting. I think that this card has, like, really reinvented this archetype. Hmm. M20 card, too. Radiant Fountain. So they're going to gain a life. They're going to gain two life. So I don't know what we draw that quite wins it for us next turn. I don't think we're going to get that. So they're up to 10. Another Elvish Reclaimer. 3-6. Cornet would be pretty good, but we'll see. So they did a lot of stuff, and they're no... Cornet's really good. So I was like, we won't have a blocker, but we will. So we're going to drop Cornet here. On this... We're going to gain 9 life, so it's going to be a lot harder for them to get us next turn. And we'll have a blocker that's bigger than the Titan, so there's that. And this also has tramples, so even if they block... I mean, they should block. I think that would be the wisest thing to do. But they could live. I don't know. I don't know. It depends on how many Radiant Fountains are, are running in the deck, I guess. So they take they take all nine. Okay, so they got to get us next turn. They got to get us next turn. Any, a lot of our auras can get us there. Oh, my goodness. They hadn't, they, if they hadn't have got that Radiant Fountain, I think we would have, they would have had to have blocked... So, two lands. They have four cards in hand. One of them is a prime time. One of them is this. So, they can play this three times over. One, two, three. Make six mana. Cast prime time. They also have enough mana to sacrifice, to sacrifice this. Ooh, they just... Okay, so so they have Radiant Fountain bounce back to hand. Okay. Castle Garenberg. Garenbrig. When do you think we'll go back to Eldrain? I'm hoping soon. Not like soon soon, but like it'd be fun to get back to Eldrain. Okay, so prime time coming out. Let's see what they get. Let's see what they get. Also, the deeper we're able to look into their deck, the better for sideboarding. Though I think we know we're going to bring a Force of Vigor this time around. We learn from our mistakes. We learn from the path. All right. Prime time. It's prime time. What was your favorite prime time shows? growing up oh my goodness you know everybody touts the office but i do remember when it was airing as the hipster just said <laughs> that was a really good one uh you know i also really love tgif so you know boy meets world was like really really big deal for me family matters and uh what is it oh step by step <laughs> ah prime time and then as you get older you're like interested in other shows and they're not all family family comedies like you know other things all right opponent is still trying to figure out what cards they want to pull from their library <sighs> i 
they are burning so much time off of their clock. We might just get them for time. Doesn't really make for great uh, viewership, though. You know. All right, so they got Valakit and they got something blah blah blah. Like I said, uh, timestamps for all matches are in the description box down below. So if you want to skip to the next one. Ooh, Hanaware Battlements. Target creature gains haste. Interesting. Okie dokie. So if it swings, I'm gonna. Well, I guess it depends on what the trigger is, what they, what they get. Even if that happens, I can block gain. I'm really interested to see what they get because I can block gain nine life. We'll bring that bring that us up to thirty, thirty plus. Field of the Dead. So they're going wide. That makes sense. I know this just got banned out of Historic. This needs to get banned out of Modern. This card was an absolute mistake. Non-interactive nonsense is this nonsense. I need a flying enchantment next turn. 100%. Or I need a spirit link. Anything to get me through. Like, none of this matters if I can just be evasive. Okay. Well, it's not going to get double strike. And they only have one card, so... I see, too. Elvish Reclaimer also working really well with Field of the Dead. We're up to 35. They're down to 3. So, even if they keep going wide, we'll still be able to gain 9 life each turn. Okay, come on. Some kind of evasive flying. Come on. Oh, my God. Okay, well, that's not what we want. Um, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, whatever. We're going to swing in. I, like, I think they have to, like, absorb as much as possible. But that's fine. We'll lose one of our Umbras, but we'll we'll keep the pressure on for them to try to make blocks. And I don't think they're going to want to block with Reclaimers since that's their main engine of getting zombies. But two, four, six, eight. It's just going to up our life total, and so that'll give us some uh, give us some padding with Valakit on the field. So that is why I'm swinging. So they're going to do that. Okay, so they're doing all sorts of blocks. I'm definitely going to get rid of this Reclaimer. Also for a strike, so... Alright, so... Yep, yeah, that sounds good. So we're up to 44. They're not taking any damage, but they lost the Reclaimer. Um, I think we can afford to play another blocker here. Not that I think they're going to do anything about it. Oh, my goodness. I wonder if they were trying... Like, I don't know what they do on their end. Like... So they get another land here. means they're going to get another if they get another field of ruin so it's any land so they could get another field of ruin and just start getting more vesuva okay so effectively there's eight field of the deads in this deck that's disgusting field of the dead that card's oh i hate this card like what are decks supposed to do about this and like not like not all decks can run Land destruction. Also, our opponent has burned so much time. <sighs> I mean, we're looking pretty good. Even if they, like, swing all out. And they only have two cards in hand. They have one. So they're playing their Sanctuary. Alright. So they're getting all their zombies. 
I'm surprised that there isn't like a zombie tribal deck that has like popped up in modern where Field of the Dead is like a big thing. Could you imagine just like having recursive like zombies and like getting them pumped? Though I guess it doesn't really matter when you're making a gajillion zombies. So. And then you just do this a couple more times, huh? Interesting. Go ahead, opponent. Go ahead. I'm at 20 minutes, too, by the way. <laughs> You're at three life. Kudos to our opponent for not scooping. I really think that we can win this game, as long as I just rip a spirit link. They might? I don't know. All right, the ghost quarter. That's fine. Yes. We want to get a planes here. All right. This way, if we have, um, this way we have Daybreak Coronet up as well. So that's why I did that. Let's see if they swing. Nope, they're keeping everything back. On the defense. All right. Come on, evasion. Flying. Ugh. That's not what I want, but that's okay. Drop this. Let's see. Do I swing in with the bogle? I don't think so. I don't think it's necessary. I think I can kind of just... I think I just stay back. Stay back on the defense. Like, because they're just going to absorb it all with their zombies. I think... I think that's fine. We'll empty out our hand here. There's no point in hiding that we don't have anything. Um... Yeah. So we're going to get another land here. Like I said, I just, I just need an alpha strike. And if we can get... Uh, ooh, come on, my microphone. If we can get like a daybreak coronet, we're whew, golden. The golden retriever. Amulet of Vigor. It's an amulet of Vigor. We have nothing in our hand. They're down to three. I'm shocked that I don't have any, like, flying. I am running for Griff's Boon as we went over in the deck tech. So, there's that. Alright, so they got another Valakit. They're doing that thing with the vigor and the blah blah blah. So, uh, any of you guys and gals watching any fun shows on Netflix or Hulu or anything? I recently started Bojack Horseman uh, on the suggestion by co-host Spiny Mouse. He said it was pretty good. Uh, I've been enjoying it so far. That show gets pretty deep. Uh, anyways. Uh, I will need a suggestion for after I'm done with that show. So if you have any suggestions, let me know in the comments down below. All right, Reclaimer doing its thing. And I'm just like, click, click, click. We gain another nine life. That'd be amazing. I think we're going to bring in, what do we want to do? Bajooka Bug. I don't really care. Amulet of Vigor. If Modern had, like, the legacy equivalent of a lands deck, I think we're looking at it. I don't know if I get to complain since I'm the Bogles player, you know? <laughs> but it's my channel, so I'm going to do it. All right. Triggers, triggers, triggers. And like I said, we have all of these one drops that are just going to soak up damage. If they block, we gain nine, two, four, six, eight. So, like, half of their attacks will be negated. So, this has got to go. This thing is a pain in the butt. Oh, if you could only play Blood Moon and... <laughs> if you could only play Blood Moon and... This is why Blood Moon has to be in the format. Things like this. Ridiculous things like this. Blood Moon is important. Oh my 
gosh. Triggered abilities. Yes, 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 yes. Also, this doesn't make for fun gameplay, having to sit through here and, like, yield to ability, like, over and over and over. Like, how's that fun for anybody? Wizards, get at me. All right, Castle Garenbrig. Playing the last card. All right, so they're going to keep just sacking creatures and getting lands. All right, they're going to swing here. I don't see what would stop them, yeah. I think that's a great plan. So, let's see. They're swinging for... Was 10? 20? Okay. So, we're going to block one of them. And... Call it good. We'll gain 9 and lose... Like, we'll lose a little bit, but I think we'll be fine. 52, we're going to lose something or other. 34, all right. Like I said, all we have to do is pretty much get the, get the flying, or get the evasion. That's, that's rough. That's really rough. All right. Trying to figure out how many more turns we can uh, possibly uh, possibly hold off. We already skipped through the attack phase. We just need one more turn. Also, I think our opponent is literally going to run out of time before they get us dead. Six minutes to get off, and uh, like it's just like I don't think it's going to happen. Now this game is getting exciting because it's like, I just, I'm one card away. And if we draw Aura next turn, we can go off with Core Spirit Dancer. So let's see, I've got 20. And I've got a bunch of blockers too. I got 20, almost 40 damage that they could deal. But I don't, oh, I was like, but I don't think they swing with everything. <laughs> this game is wild. What I told my opponent. This is a uh, this has become more than a game of Bogle versus Field of the Dead. It's become a game of. Uh, intensity and sheer will. Alright, so they're doing the thing. Oh, they're sacrificing a fuel of the dead. Interesting. Alright. Thinking getting a different card. I gotta start clicking through their their phases faster. I am not scooping this. Out of principle, we're not gonna scoop this game. Because I think we can get there. If they don't kill us... I mean, look at all the zombies they have. All They're at three life. All we need is Griff's, broon, Griff's Boon. Spirit Mantle. One of those two. I'm telling you. Okay, they're going to swing with a ton of zombies. Makes sense. Makes sense. I think we're going to sack our four creatures here. I'm totally fine with that. Okay, so we're going to block one, obviously. Obviously. So we're going to gain nine. Block. 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 All right, so we'll do it like that. I don't think we die. Oh, shit. And block. Nope. Well, so we're up to 43... I don't think we died quite yet. We're down to 13. Okay, so we need to uh, we need to rip the Miracle card this turn. This turn. They have one card in hand. This turn. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. One time. Do it for the channel. Do it for me. Come on. Don't lose the faith in the Bogles. 
<laughs> Opponent says wonderful in <laughs> this game. Boom, boom, boom. Let's see if they scoop it up now. Because I don't have any flyers. And we're just going to go off with Core Spirit Dancer as well. So... And they're in the red zone. We're very comfortably at. Uh... <laughs> All right, our opponent goes no. <laughs> he says good night. All right, we win. We win the game, so and we win the match. Welcome to game three. We just had a very fun game. All right, we don't have. Let's go into match scores. Let's see, we are up two matches. Okay, um, we got all this. We don't have, we don't have anything. I mean, we have stuff, but we don't have anything. Mm, we'll keep this. Um, we'll put a windswept heath to the bottom. All right. All right, Metcalf. Any of you Seattle Seahawks fans out there? DK Metcalf. Had a heck of a rookie year last year. What is this? All right, we're up against Student of Warfare, so we're up against some kind of jinkiness. Where were you last game? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I can't not believe it. Like, I can believe that we were able to get through that, but that was just... I mean, come on. That was a nutso game. Wild, absolutely wild game. Right. Uh, but I feel really good about that. That not only did we make them run out the clock, but like we beat that entire field. Uh, having that much life link was such a big deal. All right, so they're leveling up, leveling up. All right, so you're three three with first strike. We're okay with that. I think what we're gonna do next turn. They're playing a white deck, so I'm a little worried about Path to Exile. They're also playing jank that doesn't mean that they wouldn't play okay so i'm gonna get another actually i'm gonna get a planes here be a little more conservative with their life total and i'm going to put spirit mantle all right so we have protection from creatures I'm going to skip through the attack phase. It should, um, just in the sheer interest of if they try to swing, we'll be able to block. And, you know, it's got protection from creatures. So we'll be able to block effectively. All right, so another student. Because this could be a 4-4. Four, four, we could have we could have gotten up there. So they're leveling that up. And that's fine. All right, so another level up. Kind of won't matter here. Because we're going to drop Coronet on the boogie boy here. And then we'll have, yeah. So that was good. That was really good. If we're trying on the land. We're pretty, we can pretty dece. Pretty dece. All right. So this is pretty good too. The vigilance is really what's going to save us here. We'll be able to just swing in for with a five-five protection from creatures. So. <laughs> I should uh, I should splash red for teamer battle range. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I can't block. This game's gonna go a lot faster than the last one. Let me tell you. And we'll gain five life. Can't figure out if opponent is trying to figure out. <laughs> yeah, I can't block opponent. I'm so sorry. This is a guy playing bogles. Alrighty, righty, righty. Let the UC tidy. Mirrodin land. When do you think we're going to go back to Mirrodin? Mm -mm 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 -mm. 
Ooh, Zendikar Rising just got spoiled uh, the other day. They released the new Jace, Mirror Mage, which I like quite a lot. I, uh, very interested to see where that lands. I think there's a lot of value. We had a fan of the channel uh, hit us up on Twitter talking about uh, if you play it with, like, zero-cost things and you're able to draw, like, zero-cost things, like, does that get better? You know? Like, so if you played it with uh, Mishra's Bobble and, you know, like, other things like that, like, maybe it gets, just gets better. All right, so they're staying back on defense. Like, I don't know. I think they should be a little more aggressive. But, you know, that's just me. All right, so... Spider Umbra. We will also now be able to block your flying creature. So... And Spirit Mantle. The stack. Okay, so we won that game pretty effectively. Pretty quickly. So, hmm. They're playing a planes deck. I don't... Playing just creatures? We got really, really lucky with that protection from creatures. I think we're going to bring in a couple paths. And we want to display this as a card view. Because I think it's just easier to look at. So we're going to bring in a couple paths. Um... They seem pretty aggressive, so I'm going to drop this Spirit Dancer. Uh, just a couple. And I think that's all I want. I just want some creature removal. Not a lot, just a little bit. Just a tiny, itty-bitty little bit. Um, but yeah. So. All right. Ooh. It is really good if we draw another land. We're on the draw. We're on the draw. Let's do it. Let's go for it. All right, Metcalf. I just want to call you DJ Metcalf now. I forgot he was wearing headphones. All right. <laughs> All right, Mr. Metcalf. Or Mrs. Metcalf. Or Ms. Metcalf. Huh. All right, so they don't have a turn one play. That's good for us. But we have a turn one play, don't we? Don't we, bogey boy? All right, bogle down. Oh, my goodness. I just love this art. It's like a... Uh, sometimes, like, reprints just are, like, a slam dunk. And this one, like, top to bottom, absolute slam dunk. Absolute slam dunk. I'm so happy about that. We also didn't draw land, so we need to draw land next turn. This turn. Come on, come on. One land. One time. Mm, that's not good. That's a 2-2. Two -two. What do we do here? I guess we give it flying? Yeah, let's give it flying. That's fine. That's what they're playing. We really want another land. If I can drop this spirit mantle, uh, it'd be really good right now. I'm going to swing. We're just going to hold back. Uh, like I said, I think if we can get there and, like, alpha strike. That's really good. Opponent playing all sorts of mismatched planes. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. Mirror and Crusade, Crusader. Double strike protection from black and green. All right. So it looks like they have a, looks like they have a threat that we can't answer. But we did pack Path to Exile. So there we do have an answer in the main now for Mirror and Crusader. I wonder if they're playing Nykthos. So it looks just like a mono-white thing. I mean... It's pretty good. No. I think... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think we just... Yeah. We let them swing, and then we path Mirren Crusader... It's almost like you were listening to me, deck. Like that last game when I drew Griffspoon. Alright, I'm gonna swing. Yeah, that seems wise. That seems wise. Alright, we're gonna path the Crusader, because I don't wanna deal with that. Don't wanna deal with that nonsense. Alright, so they're gonna get their planes, the next mismatched planes. Ooh, what set do you think it's from? Ooh! Another John Avon land. 
All right, we're going to take two here. That's fine. They kind of left the shields down, unless they play something here. We really desperately need a land. Another Muran Crusader. Okay. A land. One time. It's not happening for us. That is too darn bad. Okay, so I'm going to... We're going to have to start being a little more on the D fence. This is actually not a great plan. This also has flying. I guess I should have I should have swung in there with Slippery Bogle. Misplay. Misplay. Cat Knight. Human Knight. I wonder if they're just a Knight's deck. That, was that a Human Knight? That one? The level up? I'll have to go back and watch the footage again. This could just be Knights. Mono White Knights. I wonder if they're playing History of Banalia. Alright. We are getting hurt pretty bad. Down to 10. This is gonna deal four to us. So there's they've got a good clock going on. Another Sky Hunter. And So they're definitely a knight stack. Okay. This is good to know. We need something there to excite me. Alright. So, I'm pretty sure we're going to not win this one. Let's see, so two, four. Hmm. They might get us here. That calf might get us here. Being stuck on one land. So, I played a game the other day where I was stuck on one land for five turns. Five turns, and I had Daybreak Coronet in my hand, and I had, like, a gigantic Bogle. It was pretty nuts, but, like, I just lost because I never drew a land. I wish there was a way that you could, like, insto speed, instant speed, like, draw a card without <laughs> paying mana. It just doesn't happen. Maybe it would be worth it to splash blue, kind of set up smooth. That's, like, the biggest weakness with the deck, right? It's... Flying, double strike, flying. Well, the good news is I'm going to gain a little bit here. We'll gain two, we'll lose two. First strike. Okay. Yeah, so they're going alpha strike. That's probably the wise thing to do. It's not probably. It is the wise thing to do. It's kind of a race. So, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm. I can only block this. Alright. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Drop down to two. I don't know what saves me here. I need... So we're down to two. Let's see what... There you have two cards in hand. What do we draw? We draw a bunch of planes. Alright. This doesn't have vigilance. Doesn't have protection. All right, I think we, I think they got us. That's fair. We're gonna reserve our time effectively. That was a good game. Our opponent just outraced us. I think that's kind of what we're at here. Is uh, kind of a state of a race, you know. So if we're racing, yeah, I think we just run it back. Honestly. I think that's kind of what we want to do. <sighs> I wonder what our opponent does here. Hmm. Creature spells. Yeah, Gaddic Teague's not good here. I guess we could have also brought in Gaddic Teague. No, Gaddic Teague wouldn't have been good in our last games. Um. Yeah. Okay. I would like to play first. Hopefully we have more than one land. Uh, huh. Okay, we got them all that. Oh, we got them all that too. That's much better. We'll keep this. What do we want? We don't want Glade Cover Scout. And we don't want... 
oh, I really want to keep Daybreak Coronet, but having a Dryad Arbor really makes that difficult. Really makes that difficult. And I don't want to get rid of a land. Uh, casual spike in me says get rid of Dryad Arbor because it would be wiser to... It feels like a bad idea, isn't it? Um... What if we draw into it? What if we draw into it? Oh, I gotta be wise. All right, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. All right. Gotta play to our outs. All right, we're gonna fetch out our Temple Garden and we're gonna drop Slippery Bogle. And then next turn, we're gonna drop Griff's. Or not Griff's Moon. Maybe we should drop Griff's Moon. I think Ethereal Armor. Start. Whoops. Start bulking up the Bogey Boy. All right, Slippery Bogle. You're up. What do we mold to? We mold to five cards. That's rough. They kept a full grip, too. The Dryad Arbor is also really, like, ugh, sorry, really tricky because, like, it's a creature, so we don't technically, we won't be able to get to play anything off of it first, so. It is a knight. Okay, so we're just playing, like, a mono white knights. Mono knight deck. So. If we draw a plane, that'd be so mad. So mad. Okay. So we didn't mess up. Perfect. Um Yeah, let's get Ethereal Armor on Slippery Bogle. And we're gonna swing in for two. We're gonna get we're gonna get a little freaky here. See if they block. Also, I imagine that they're packing some sort of enchantment hay. They are a mono white deck. Alright. Of all the lands I could have had, a Dryad Arbor. It would have been so nice to be able to. So they take two. That's what we want. All right. Next turn, we'll be able to Griff Spoon and Rancor. So that's also really good. So they decide to level up here. That's all right. So that's level two. So that's how they decide to spend their mana. We're going to take three, which is... Like I said, it's going to be an all-out race. Let's see what we draw. Depending on what we draw, it depends on, obviously, how we play. Nothing. Nothing that I really want right now. We're going to Rancor. And we're going to also Griff's Moon. How much does it need to level up? So, two for six? Uh, it's going to take a while for them to get to level seven. So. All right, Slippery Bogle. Ooh, that was loud. I'm sorry if you were listening with earphones. I apologize. All right, Slippery Bogle. Get in there. Taking seven. Down to 11. Oh, thank heaven. All right. What do you got now, Metcalf? Huh? 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 Eh, Metcalf? Eh? 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 <laughs> Metcalf. Meet the Mets. Meet the Mets. Let's all go out and meet the Mets. Calf. I apologize, Metcalf. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to entertain myself here, too. So. Alright, another student of warfare. Let's see if they do a level up. So far, we can deal another seven, and we can drop down a Glade Cover Scout as a blocker. Looks like they also missed a land drop, so we might be doing all right. Meet the Mets. Meet the Mets. Hey, come on out and meet the Mets. Let's see if they, let's see if they try to level up here. Uh, the only level up card that I really like is Hex Drinker. Shout out to Artist Forest ML. Check him out on Twitter. All right, so they keep up one white mana. I guess in theory they could. All right, so this gets even bigger, which is great. It's great. It's got double first strike. I wish if you had two first strike things, they would add up to double strike. Wouldn't that be amazing? There's no sense in keeping our hand of mystery. 
if they also drop a flyer, we're also pretty good because we have trample damage that we can get through. So there's also that, which is great. So they're down to two. They're down to two. What are they going to do? What do you got, Metcalf? What is in your hand? How do you stop this? All right, so they have a flying blocker. That's fine. All right, they're swinging in with their double strike. Um, yeah, whatever. We'll... It's a principal thing. We'll lose our Glade Cover Scout. I'm not worried about it. All right, we win the match. Good game, Metcalf. Good game. Skater boy. All right, so we're going to update our match record, our scores. What do you all think of the new uh the new keeping track of keeping track of the scores, huh? I thought it would be fun to uh just keep it on the screen for everybody. Uh that's we're on the draw. We'll keep this. Skaterboard. GLHF. We'll keep this. We're on the draw. Might not be the best, but what are you can do? Skater underscore boy. Kind of rams with our boogie boy. All right. Opponent says you as well. All right. So if they thought sees us here, we are in big, big trouble. Okay. Mishra's bobble. Mishra's bobble. We could still be in big trouble. Are we in big trouble? Because if we're in big trouble. Oh. I kind of wonder if we should scoop it up. I wasn't expecting any hand hate. So it looks like up we're, we're up against some kind of Death Shadow deck. Well, no, I wouldn't think Death Shadow would play Blooming Marsh. It could be like Jun Traverse. I don't know. We'll see. Another bogey boy. Oh, it's rough. Okay. Uh, that was... I kept that hand on, like... On the entirety that I could get away with keeping... One bogey. <laughs> and just, like, draw my way out of it, eventually. But, uh... That, uh, that plan goes out the window if you, uh... I should have known their avatar is dark confidant. Oh, I should have should have been a little bit more liberal with my choices. Oh, so they must be it could just be green black rock. That means we have to worry about fatal push. Hmm. That's unfortunate. Depending on what we draw next turn, we may or may not just scoop up game one, cause But I kinda wanna see what more of our opponent's deck has. So Liliana the Veil. Vale. Okay, so we're definitely blah, blah, blah. we're definitely bringing in ley lines next game. So we won't be able to. All right, so we'll get rid of Griff's boon. That's fine. There's some recursion. We'll be on the play next turn, so that'll that'll definitely help. Getting rid of our threat was not great. The totem armor also helps. Okay, so... Mm, I want to see... Let's play it out one more turn, but I'm pretty sure that they're green-black rock. So, Quagmire. So, we're bringing Path to Exile. We'll bring in Leyline of Sanctity. So, I mean... They know what's in our hands, so I'm not worried about revealing information to them, but I just want to get a little bit more. Nurturing Peatland. I don't see any red, so... Oof. All right, so we're going to concede this game. They got us. Man, Thoughtseize. Also a Ghost Quarter, so that's good to know. All right, so what do we want? We want this. I don't want to get targeted. We want to display this as a card view, naturally. Uh, bringing Path to Exile. Hmm, they're probably... They're probably playing Tarmogoyf. 
Mm, let's drop Spirit Link. I think Core Spirit Dancer is a little bit of a liability. Uh, if they're metagaming against us, so the idea would be they take out Fatal Push because it doesn't target, but we also have Core Spirit Dancer, so they, they think that we don't do that. We don't take out, I don't know. It's a back and forth of like, do you keep any in because you know that there's a lot of targeted removal? Mm. I think we're going to take out all Spirit Dancers. Um, I'm trying to keep things as like tight as possible here. Reach isn't really as important, First Strike, because I don't think they have any flying creatures. So we're going to try it like this. They might just get us here, but... Uh, Leyline will protect us against lilies and, you know, the natural, the natural protection with Bogles should hopefully protect us against other things. This is a very, very keepable hand. We will drop Leyline and we will drop Bogles. Okay. We're playing slippery bogle. Okay, so I think we're off to a pretty good start. Even they can't all of their all of their hand disruption is dead against us. So our hand disruption is dead against us. The removal is dead against us. So I think we're in a pretty good spot. We'll be able to play Umbra. So we'll be able to play a Glade Cover Scout. And then we'll be able to play Umbra again on or Bogle. They, mm, they could run Damnation. That is something that they could have, but I don't know if they'll have that, so we'll see. Hopefully we'll be so far ahead by the time they get to anything. That was a, that was a dream, dream seven. The only thing I could think is having a fetch so I could play this coronet next turn, but all right, swamp for our opponent, the rock. Shout out to the Grim Flayer over YouTube. Also, if you love Bogles, shout out to Foul Play MTG on YouTube. This person is making tons of Bogle content. They are so big into Bogles, their entire deck is all foil bogles it is pretty cool so after this video if you want more bogle content i highly recommend checking them out so they're doing leagues with bogles here i am we we're playing some pretty some pretty good decks though against some pretty good decks all right so they're gonna we'll take three this forest is problematic Lurus of the Dream Den. Okay. So they're taking three. That's not what they want. I wonder if they scoop. I don't think so. I think they. I think if they could get to four, if they have a Damnation, maybe even Bontu's Last Reckoning. I don't know if the Rock is playing that, but... We should have kept back Glade Cover Scout in case of a board ripe. Plague Engineer. That's pretty good. I guess I guess you name Elf. Okay. So that's their board wipe, okay. So we're gonna be all in on Slippery Bogle. It definitely would have been wise to hold back Glade Cover Scout in case of a sweeping a sweeper effect. But I think yeah, if we had been able to drop an Umbra on it, we would have been okay. But Okay, wind swept heap. It's perfect. All right, we'll get our temple garden here. Yes. We're just going to drop the coronet on here. Okay, so they're not scooping. That's great. We'll gain six life. They're down to four. Blooming Marsh, Enter the Revealed. So they didn't lose any life. They're up to four mana here. They could be up to four mana. I mean, they are up to four mana. So they could, in theory, drop. This Ley Line really, really saved our butts. 
I'm telling you. It's good. It is good. All right, just waiting for Skater Boy here. Ah, uh, Green Black Rock. What a fun deck. I think it's gotten a lot of good tools over the... All right, so we win the game. That seemed pretty good. Like I said, we had kind of had a dream opening hand. The only difference, the only thing was... Um, What? What did I do? Uh-oh. Oh, return the game. I wanted to display this, but we're just going to run it back the same. I think I think if we can get a ley line of sanctity down like we did in game 1, we're looking pretty okay. Like I said, that was like, oh my gosh, we could have asked for a better hand. And we were on the play. <sighs> this is tricky. I think we got a mulligan this. I'm really wanting that ley line of sanctity. Rest in peace is pretty good. I'm gonna mull this too. Hmm. We'll keep this. Two cards at the bottom. Mm, let's get rid of Dryad, Arbor, and Griff Spoon. I was really, really hoping for that ley line, so we don't have that we don't have that shield up. We don't have that shield up. So if Bogle gets Ooh, so we'll be able to play our Bogle. Okay, so we'll be okay. But we also have to worry about Liliana the Veil, and they're also on the play, so let's get the three mana before we do, so. That feels pretty good. Let's just play that. Yeah. All right. Bogle comes out every game. I do love it. I do love it. Next turn, we'll be able to Griff Spoon and Hyena Umbra. I think getting Hyena Umbra is, like, priority one. Let's see what they have here. Tarmogoyf. Okay. So it's a good thing that we brought in Rest in Peace. Maybe we'll draw it. Maybe we won't. What do we get here? We draw it. Oh, this is really tricky. Nah, it's not that tricky. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay, so here, so we have a couple options. We could play Rest in Peace, <clears throat> thus guaranteeing that Tarmogoyf stays a lowly 0-2. Pass it back. They'd be on turn three. Three, which means that they'd be able to play Plague Engineer and they could name Beast and we could lose Slippery Bogle. I think we have to take one turn off and just get these Umbras on because I don't want to run into a situation where Plague Engineer wipes out our only threat. So if it turns into a race, you know, that's what it's going to be. So... Next turn, we can play Rest in Peace if they don't have Hand Hate. And who knows? They might have taken out the Hand Hate after they saw Game 1 Leyline of uh, Sanctity. Hand Hate just might not be as good as they think it is. Um, so they could have been metagaming against that. So we might be okay. We might not be okay. So let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see what happens here. All right. They're not in the 17. It's coming back. To, oh, it's going back to them. We got lucky that they had a hissing quagmire first. All right, Ghost Quarter. Liliana the Veil. Oh, no. <laughs> this is why I needed Ley Line. I think we lose everything. Oh, that was bad. I didn't even think about Liliana. Yeah. Maybe we should have mulliganed for that ley line. Ley line is so good. We might we might we might lose this one. <laughs> Say it ain't so, Kai Guy. I know, little Billy, but you know sometimes even aspiring spikes lose. 
That is not a dig against Aspiring Spike. Dude is a champion in my eyes. <sighs> it is kind of a nombo with Griff Spoon, but I don't think I'm going to get the four mana to do that. And... And Liliana is going to force the card out of my hand if I don't drop this now. So we'll drop Rest in Peace. I think that Secret Layer drop Rest in Peace uh, just uh, just got released yesterday. The one with the doggo on the on like the pillars. So cute. But I also thought that the dog had died. And so I was like, why would you do this? That's terrible. Oh, my gosh. All right. So Tarmoglyph is pretty much no threat to us which is great. But I think Skater Boy might have the big advantage having Liliana the Veil. Yeah. I think we should have risked it for the Biscuit. Because now we don't have a threat. And they can get rid of her Horizon Canopy with Ghost Quarter here. Lures to the Dream Den. So, okay. Some Life Link. I don't know how we get past Liliana the Veil. I really don't. So we're going to draw a card. See what we get. <laughs> Gift Spoon. Okay. We're at, we're at 12 life. We might, we might not. We just might not get this one. Good on our opponent. Skater boy, skater boy. Mistress Bobble, sure, exile zone. You're not getting any value off of that, that's for sure. Skater Boy getting in. Yeah, I don't know if we can come back from a Liliana the Veil. Like, even if we get another threat, the threat dies. So, yeah. Good on our opponent. The the sideboarding, like, metagame is, like, super intense when you're playing, like, targeted removal. So, keeping in Liliana the Veil is pretty good. You know, you can each discard so and glade cover scout all right so we'll just play it and we're gonna scoop it up nice games skater boy all right we're gonna concede the game <laughs> we cry we cry because we lost all right skater boy wins the match good on our opponent Match five against Braids eighty eight. Need to update. Uh, I want to put a one. All right. Uh, let's see. I would like to play first. That's a pretty keepable hand. Ethereal Armor, Ethereal Armor, Daybreak Coronet. And we are on the play. So, just waiting for Braids 8. Let's see. Let's play the Temple Garden untapped. And... Drops the three bubbles. Oh, man. I didn't want to mull more than five cards. It kind of is a weird thing, but like... Maybe I should have. I don't know. Would you like how how deep do you dig for like your sideboard pieces? Like if you know, because I think that we just kind of steamrolled steamrolled that second game for sure. Um, not that our opponent didn't have any outs, but I think we just kind of we were doing. <gasps> no, I skipped through my attack phase. That's a bummer. We could have hit for so much more damage. 
fog? Might fog? Oh, how much fun would a turbo fog deck? You gotta be playing it. You gotta be playing. You gotta be playing attention. Paying attention to what you're doing on the game board. So now I have to do this post combat, and that was a mistake. Big time mistake. Oh my gosh, this would have been so big too. I biffed. I biffed it. <laughs> Alright. Tell our opponent, I biffed. Alright, braids. We're gonna... This is gonna be such a big bogle boy. Leonin Arbiter. Leonin Arbiter, where? Yeah, that's fine. We're up against death and taxes. Oh, how I hate death and taxes. Hmm. I mean, do they really... I guess. I'm trying to think what they could have that would like mess with things. Like Flicker Wisp? They could have Flicker Wisp. Maybe I drop Spider Umbra here too. Oops. I mean, this would. I mean. Yeah, let's drop a spider umbra. That's fine. This means it'll have reach, so we're protected against any kind of flying creature. I think if we had attacked with all of those enchantments on the first turn, it would have been a different story, but we can do. And we're so far ahead. Like, I don't know if they... Yeah, they're down to six. We're up to 27. We like that. I like that a lot, actually. Double Ghost Quarter. So they get double Ghost Quarter, but, like, I think they need to play a creature. They're also all this colorless mana, so I think they're pretty far behind. The King. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. All right, so they're death and taxes. What do we care about for death and taxes? Path? Display, card view. Is there, can anyone tell me if there's a way to make this permanent that like I can display it like card view like this as permanent? Let me know. Are they, mm, it's just lands. Stony Silence seems pretty good. Path also seems pretty good. I think they're probably playing Path. Oh, their own Paths. Force of Vigor? Are they playing any enchantments that I'm worried about? I mean, other than, like... Let me bring in one Stony Silence. Kind of shut off... Actually, let's just bring in two Stony Silences. Shut off Aether Vial. They get a lot of value off of that, so... As Spiny Mouse can attest... And as I have played against Death and Taxes a good million times, I hate the deck so much. <laughs> All right, Braids88. We have... We have a lot of lands. So I think I'm going to keep this. We also have a threat. We have lands and a threat. So we're going to keep this. Um, and we're going to play Windswept Heath first and fetch out a land. I don't want any kind of nonsense against. All right, planes from braids, eight giver of runes, sure. All right, so they are like straight up death and taxes. All right, so this, fetch this. Let's get a temple garden today. Yes, today. And play the slippy bogey boy. I do love that I have like. It's not been Glade Cover Scout like this entire the entirety of these matches. It's always been Slippery Bogle. Oh my goodness, goodness. Thraben Inspector. Oh, I forgot that this was reprinted in Double Masters. Hmm. Some good tech. Also extra glad then that I 
brought in Stony Silence. All right, what can we do here? We have a planes. This is great. So we can Spider Umbra. And then we can Hyena Umbra. Umbra? Umbrella, Ella, Ella, stand on my umbrella. I cannot believe it took me this long to start singing Umbrella. <laughs> stand on my, oh, I can't believe we lost this game. Good on our opponent, though. Very good on our opponent. Bungles is not an easy match to, like, win against. Sometimes it just gets steamrolled. All right. We'll see if they block, but I'm going to get freaky and attack. That's fine. Oh, it's going to give it protection, I imagine. Yeah, that's fine. So we need an evasive thing, or we need something that will help with that. All right. Ella, Ella, stand under my umbrella. Ella, all right. The good news is we'll be able to play Daybreak Cornet here. Also the good news. Is Death and Taxes playing Field of Ruin? Is this a thing? Interesting. <whistles> oh, Hans. What do you all think of, um, what do you guys think of the new little Kai Kai avatar? Me and Hans. All right, Eldrazi Displacer. I brought in Path of Exile, so it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Or not, you know. Okay. Umbra, Umbra. Exile target creature. So this does nothing. If it has protection, it won't deal damage. Okay. I don't see the reason why we wouldn't want to swing, especially since it has Vigilance. Stupid giver of ruins. Ruining modern. Blah. Okay. So it's blocking. It's blocking. And protection. Protection from green. Opponent does it. We aren't going to be able to deal any damage, which means we're not going to be able to gain any life. That's unfortunate. This giver is really uh, messing around with our plans here. Ugh. I know what deck Spiny Mouse is rooting for. Stop it. Start rooting for your co-host. All right. But they're not attacking because if they do, we'll gain a ton of life. We just need an evasive thing. All right. We're going to do this. I thought about putting Hall of Heliod's Generosity in this deck, but it also didn't, like, I don't know, it just didn't seem necessary. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just waiting on our opponent. Get in there, bogey. Bogey boy. Slippery bogey bogey boy. What are they doing? Ooh, disenchant. I came in and out of the sideboard. You sneaky sneak. Again, Hall of Heliod's generosity. Maybe that would have been good. I don't know. Disenchant seems pretty good since we're loaded with enchantments and they took out the best one here, so. All right. Let's get to know for the next game. They're going to draw a card. They're down at two cards in hand, too. I didn't even realize. Uh, oh, yeah. I was going to say. Uh, so the little avatar here is uh, artist Avery Ryan over on Twitter. Um, be sure to check him out. 
There's a lot of really cool stuff. I love this style. At Avery Ryan Art. So thank you for helping contribute to the channel. All right, what do you got? Flicker Wisp. Okay, it looks like they might be. So if they're able to flicker and continue to flicker enchantments, I think we might lose this one. Depending on how it works, I'm pretty sure that it just. When is Wizards just gonna print a better Flicker Wisp? Could you imagine like a two drop flash flying, like a one one? Does the same thing. Yeah, it's fine. I'm really worried about lands. They're playing all of the land destruction that they can get their hands on. All right, we're gonna fetch out here. We're gonna get. Probably another Temple Garden, if I'm being honest. Alright. No. Thin. Thin. Thin the deck. Okay. So they can, like, blink one enchantment at a time. Oh, yes. That's what I'm talking about. A giver of runes is super annoying, though. I like. They might just start getting rid of all of my lands here. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Without Thraben, without Leon and Arbiter, it's not quite as what, well, quite as good. Let's see. Field of Ruin. I'm gonna swing in for three. I'm going to block. This is extra interesting, too, because this forces them to use Giver Runes. Or maybe not. Maybe this. Maybe they just activate Displacer? I don't know. Okay, so they do that. They give protection from green. Which means that we can get in for seven next turn very comfortably. Or probably a little bit less, depending on what they displace her out. I don't know if they realized that the Slippery Bogle had reach. Mm. That's going to cost them, though. Because that means that I can definitely get in. think that's what we want to do, right? Alright, we're going to swing in for 8 here. We're not going to gain any life link or anything, but... Okay, so they chump here. And they're going to take 7. But if we're going to get some damage in... We're going to get some damage in. Okay, they're going to take a little bit less... Oh, they're going to probably flash Rancor. That's probably a good idea. Oh, no, they block and do that. Okay. Man, the intricacies of Eldrazi Displacer. We did bring in Path, though. Yeah, we brought in Path. So, you know, we could still draw Path. I don't even know what we get rid of. I think we just get rid of Giver Ruins, which is also unfortunate. They're just going to get a bunch of blink value off of this. That's pretty good. I see what's going on. We're kind of at a weird stalemate. I don't know. I don't know how we get out of this. I'm telling you, we get a path. We path giver of ruins. We also have another path. But like having displacer and flicker wisp mana um, it's just it's you know, the value okay, so let's fetch out thin the deck a little bit more. Alright. And planes? Yeah, we'll go planes. Rancor. Um, I'm gonna go to game three. Let's 
I think we could have played this out, but having the the, the having the second giver of runes is just it's too much. It's just backbreaking. Let's see. You have hexproof. That doesn't do anything for me. Hmm. I think we're just running it back. I'm just hoping to get out a little bit faster than we did. Turn one giver of runes is really rough. Uh but good on our opponent. That was very, very master masterful play. Letting our opponent know that. Uh yes. I'd like to go first. Ugh. I mean, if we got Triad Arbor. No. I wanna That's better. All right, so we're gonna keep this hand. We want to put put the another bogo to the bottom. No, we'll keep this. We'll put a bogo at the bottom. Done. And let's see. Fetch. Yes. And we're gonna play a slippery bogo. Yeah, when uh, Death and Taxes is able to kind of get out, of, get that value train going, it's just, it just gets absolutely ridiculous. So, I'm going to start over and see if we can get out and away from it. All right, three bin inspector. All right, that's cool. They're going to get their little clue token. A clue. We just figured out blues clues. We just figured out blues clues. Bringing out blues clues because we're really smart. That's right. We're freaking out blues clues here. Spirit mantle. Protection from creatures. So you can't block anything. And then we're going to play Daybreak Coronet. And then we're going to play Griff Spoon. And then we're going to play this. And we're going to play that. I don't know. It's very interesting. Maybe they're not playing Aether Vial in this build. I haven't seen it once. Tech Edge. Ah, Tech Edge. From our opponent. Thraven. Thraven getting in there. Oh, no. Thalia, Guardian of Thraven. That's unfortunate. But we can still cast what we need to cast. Uh, forest. Point. Point. Green. Five, five. First strike, lifelink, protection from creatures, and vigilance. Yeah, it's pretty nice when you have protection from creatures all the time without having to keep up a giver of runes. We're definitely in a much better situation than we were with the last game. They also could have Disenchant here, so that's also something that we need to think about. Hmm. Both of these are really good, though, so we'll see what they... Blade a Splicer. There's a new Splicer in town. Spiny the Splicer Mouse. Alright. They're also tapped out. This is great. This is kind of what I really want to see. Oh, beautiful. So beautiful. You are beautiful in every single way. Words can't bring me down. Opponent, down to five. The 
depending on what they play here, if they tap out, I think we're okay. Because if we can give the Slippery Bogle flying, I think we'll be okay. Spirit Mantle really just... This card costs two, but it's pretty good. It's doing work. All right. They don't attack. They're on their second main. What do they got? Flicker Wisp? I'm going to flicker something out. Go to their end step. That's fine. Razor Verge Thicken, eh? So... I think... Because I think they might have Disenchant. I'm going to do this. Which means that we have Evasion no matter what. No matter what they get rid of, we'll have Evasion if they play Disenchant. They could play Winds of Abandon, but I don't think that the, I don't think they can cast the overload cost. Also, that's a sorcery, so. I think we got there, but we'll see. We'll see what they do. Alright, 9-8. We're also at 27 life, so that's a nice little cushion. I'm very curious to see if they have something. Because it would cost 3 to cast Disenchant. They don't have any flying creatures either. They could have uh, the Aven Mind Sensor. So they're doing that. And that's fine. We still have flying. Yeah. Having Griff's Boon was definitely what we wanted. Telling you, the more evasive, the more evasive, uh, the more evasive you can be, the better off, the better off you are. So, uh, all right. So that was. Fun little slippery bogles. Uh, what did you all think? Did you have fun with the videos? Oh my goodness, what was going on with match two? Or match, yeah, with all of, I cannot believe we got through the Field of Ruins. I think the, I think the deck's pretty good. Um, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think we have, I think it's got what it takes. I really, really like Spirit Mantle. Um, I don't necessarily think Spirit Link is something that you could keep. You could probably get rid of that. There are some new Theros cards, uh, that one mana enchantment from Theros Beyond Death. That's pretty good. Um, but yeah, I really am loving the evasion in this deck. I think that that is a big deal. Um, yeah, so uh, thank you again for watching. Uh, and if I played you, thank you for the fun matches. Uh, I had to do a lot of thinking. Uh, Super, super kudos to Skater Boy, uh, who was the only person to defeat me today. Uh, yeah. Until next time, I hope that you have the high ground. Bye-bye from the Kai Guy. I have the high ground!